Welcome Flip Clock fans, this is a Castlon mini mod, it's a clock we're going to talk about today. I haven't been online, I made any YouTube videos in a while because I was on vacation last month. I had a hard time getting back into this, but uh, I want to show you this lighthouse here, and I found this on my vacation, I'll tell you how it relates to flip clocks, believe it or not. But, well, we live in the United States, and we go this year to South Carolina. Why? Well, that's where the wife wanted to go. Uh, that's the flag there on the left of South Carolina. And who goes on vacation with their flip clock anyway? I mean, that's kind of strange. I mean, it's not like you're going to take it to the beach or anything like that. But, but I had to figure out some way to relate this to uh, my vacation to flip clocks. So let's think about this uh, lighthouse. And the, the only time I had seen it was on this Tiger Woods PGA Tour game. I actually remember playing this game and seeing that lighthouse. And... Uh, so at Hilton Head, where we went, Hilton Head Island, we got to see that lighthouse and we got to see that golf course too. I didn't know much about Hilton Head. Um, like I said, I, I'm just one of those guys that tries to make the wife happy. We go wherever she wants to go. But she had to see this lighthouse. So that's one of the things we did. The Sea Pines Resort has a lighthouse. Sea Pines and Hilton Head was developed by Charles Frazier back in the late 50s and 60s. And the lighthouse became a center point about this resort and about the island itself, it's became kind of famous uh, locally. Uh, anybody who goes there is going to go look at it. You see on these maps, they uh, always picture it there at the toe of the shoe-looking island there. You'll see that. You'll see it on t-shirts and stuff like that. So it's a big deal to people in that area. And it's beautiful. This is a picture we took uh, on a very nice day. And this is from the height of the lighthouse looking out over the golf course, the 18th hole of the golf, golf course. We stayed at the spa on uh, Port Royal Sound, and it was kind of like a condominium. Um, it was really nice. We had a we had a, it, we had a nice time there. This is the, the balcony where we could go out, and this is the view we saw. We were always looking out for alligators. Uh, that's the sound. Uh, this is uh, the bedroom uh, where I put my clock. So yeah, I brought a clock, and they had this weird design here. This weird. Uh, art here I guess but it seemed to fit my clock just fine this quirky little clock the castle on mini mod we're going to do a review of that clock um, and here you see it's priced at $7.99 look at this ad here for this uh, chroma color I want to show you this ad here from the chroma color color picture is so good it's become the standard of excellence the name Zenith chroma color in brilliant new portables and giant screen consoles only Zenith has it. It kind of puts it into perspective. So this is the 70s, and that's what was going on. Let's see the clock dropped down in price to just under $7. Then it went down to $6. Um, this is 70, 73, and it dropped all the way down to $4.99. Uh, I thought that was curious. It's the lowest price clock I'd ever seen. And, and some of this other stuff you see pictured there uh, in that ad you can find on eBay now too. So here's the clock, the Castellon Mini Mod. Uh, I'm actually doing the review here in the... Um, in our uh, condominium we stayed at um, while the wife was sleeping. You see the, the digits, they've, they're kind of a uh, just a weird little quirky little font there. It's got a nice well, nice shape, just curious shape. Kind of like a clamshell or something like that. I just always like the look of these. Now, you saw how how cheaply they were priced, but you know, you, you don't see these very often on, on eBay. But here's how you crack this sucker open. It, it is like a clamshell almost. We'll have to go ahead and pull this out. You don't have to take off any screws uh, to get this clock apart. You do have to take that knob off. So you peel that back, just kind of relieve the pressure a little bit. You don't have to be aggressive, and off it comes. You can see you probably wouldn't want your kids to have a clock like this. I don't know if that had any bearing. And you see the, the faceplate there. It's held in place by these two springs. Some of the, a lot of the early clocks did that. There's uh, the Castle on 701, did that, and this is real glass here. That's why I really like this clock. It's, it's just, just compact. It's neat. You got the whirly gig there with the green tape on it. That's nice. These clocks, whenever I open them up, they're typically very clean, and uh, sometimes you have to oil the motor to get it going again. But they're very clean. The way they were designed. Seems to keep dust out really well. Let's pop this sucker right back in there to get it back together. I said it's one of my favorite little quirky clocks. 
I've got a couple of them. I just really, really enjoy it. It was a nice clock to take on vacation. And yes, I take flip clock every time I go on vacation. It's just a matter of which one I take. And just this one happened to be the lucky one. And I used it. It's, Tells me the time, but here's this uh, this lighthouse, the Harbor Town Lighthouse, also called the Sea Pines Lighthouse. What in the world does this have to do with flip clocks? Well, I just think it's I think it's fantastic. It's, it's it's beautiful. It's got a really good view. It's it's famous because the golf course, the Harbor Town Links, is on the PGA Tour. Uh, it's actually famous, and from from here you can see the 18th hole and it's kind of neat because they talk about how when when you're playing the 18th hole you actually use the lighthouse to line up your shot it's been shown in many magazines on TV you see this lighthouse a lot so what's the big deal about this lighthouse well when this guy Charles Frazier was developing Hilton Head and specifically Sea Pines he decided to make a, a lighthouse now some people they say called it Fraser's Folly uh, because it seemed kind of silly. And well, here's one of the things that I thought was curious. We went to we went to this Tybee Lighthouse. This was just uh, outside of Savannah, Georgia, on Tybee Island. And we went there, and the guy who was kind of running the tour, who sent us up there, he called the Sea Pines Lighthouse a faux lighthouse. Why? Well, it was built in 1969, 1970. So I guess because. Uh, I don't know, he's jealous because his lighthouse, um, which was built in the 1860s, and uh, his lighthouse doesn't have a video game about it. Um, but to call it a faux lighthouse uh, is curious. It's just kind of arrogant in a way. Um, you can see our little flip clock made a visit to the top. I think this is the first time a flip clock's been to the top of that lighthouse. Uh, but to say it's a faux lighthouse, uh, yeah, it wasn't built in the olden days, but it's a lighthouse, and it's actually on the Coast Guard's charts. So I got me one of these little things off of eBay because, well, the, the lighthouse was made in the 1970s and, in, and a lot of people who who are into clocks, or uh, horologists, see flip clocks as not real clocks. And so it goes, seems to go hand in hand to me. Uh, this lighthouse kind of kind of represents how I feel about flip clocks in light of uh, people not thinking they're real clocks but there it is that's uh, the sea pines or the harbor town lighthouse our little mascot thanks for taking the time